In this video I will be showing how to make a beam walking system. The beams are spline actors so you can easily make a custom shape for the beam. It will work regardless of if the spline points are linear or curved. The system will also work to walk up or down slope beams. First, I will be getting the animations. This system only requires one. I will use the crouched walking animation from Mixamo. Make sure to download it in place and without skin. Next I will convert the animation to use the Unreal Engine standard skeleton by using a converting software. I will put a link to the software in the description. Next open Unreal Engine. I will make a new folder for the beam balance system. Import the animation. Ne Next create a new actor. Name it Beam Actor. Add a spline component to the actor. Now open the construction script. We will set up the script here since we need the spline to be updated in the editor. Add a for loop. For the last index, first get the spline length. Next divide it. Drag the output into last index and it will automatically create a truncate node which basically removes any decimals and leaves just the whole number. The value to divide by will be a variable called mesh length. I will set the default value to 5. Next I will add a spline mesh component. To create the mesh for the beam, I will modify one of the starter content meshes. Find the one called shape underscore cube. Create a copy of this in the beam folder. Rename it to beam mesh. Next go to modeling mode from the top left. Set the scale of the cube mesh to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Next click on bake RS, which stands for bake rotation and scale. This will enable us to modify the actual static mesh's properties. Go back to the beam blueprint and set the mesh in the add spline mesh component to the beam mesh. Next we need to create a new collision object type for beams. Open project settings and go to collision. Click new object channel and name it beam with default response to ignore. Go back to the beam blueprint. Set the collision preset to custom. Set it to block all and back to custom so by default they are all on block. Set the beam response to overlap. This is so the player can trace the beam using collision. Drag out of the add spline mesh component return value and get attach component to component. The parent will be the default scene root. This is so the spline meshes are added under this actor. Next set the start and end of the spline mesh.
Get the spline and type get location at distance along spline. Also get the tangent at distance along spline. Normalize the tangent. This will make it so the width of the spline mesh is uniform along the spline. Get the index of the for loop and multiply it. The value to multiply by will be the mesh length variable. Connect this to both the distances. Convert it into a function. This code is finding where the start and end position for each spline mesh should be based on the path we make in the editor. Make sure to set this function to a pure one. Rename the input to index. Open the function and add a return node. The outputs will be the result of the location and normalized tangent. Connect the outputs to the start position and tangent of the set start and end. Duplicate the function and connect it to the end position and tangent. The index will be the for loops index but with one added to it. This is since we need the next spline point and not the same one as the start point. Now get the spline and set input spline point to construction script to true. Drag the beam actor into the editor. You can create new spline points by holding alt and dragging while a spline point is selected. Go back to the beam actor and click on the beam actor self. Type in tag and add a new actor tag called beam. I will now comment the code. Now I will create a test level with four different beams to showcase all of its features. If you want the spline to not be curved, then right click on the point and set spline point type to linear.
open the beam blueprint again. After adding the spline mesh component, set its material. Promote the material to a variable. I will set its default value to the basic wall material. Set instance editable and expose on spawn to true so that the material can be set in editor and it can be different for each beam. I will create three different materials to showcase how it works. Click on the beam actor and you can simply drag and drop the material in the right to change it. Now open your player blueprint. Select the mesh and add a sphere collision. This will detect for beams. Set the location to 40. Set the radius to 50. Next set the collision of it to custom. Set the beam response to overlap. Add an on component begin overlap for the beam tracer. Add a branch that will check if the hit actor has a tag of beam. If true, then add another branch. Create a new boolean variable called is on beam. Set this as the condition of the second branch. If, if false then drag out and add a do once node. Drag out of the hit actor and cast to the beam actor. Connect it to completed. Next set is on beam to true. Then get the character movement and set the max walk speed. Promote the value to a variable. I will set the default speed to 200 but you can change this if you want. Next, get stop movement immediately. Create a new boolean variable called can move. Set this to false. Then add a move component to node. The component will be the capsule component. On completed, set can move to true. Then connect it to reset of the do once node. Go to the movement input script. Make some space. Add a branch node that checks the can move value. If true, then continue with adding movement input. Now create a new function that will find the move to location for the beam. It will have three inputs. The first one is to reference the beam actor. The second is to reference the spline component of the beam. The third is a move to factor to determine how close to move to the beam target location. It will have two outputs. The first is a vector for the move to location and the second is the rotation. First, get the control rotation. Get the forward vector of this to find the direction the camera is facing. Multiply it by a float. 
the float will be the move to factor input. Next get the world location of the mesh. Add this to the multiply result. Now get the beam spline component input and get find location closest to world location. Add a vector to this. We will add the beam actor's world location to this. This is since the target location will be relative to the world origin so we need to translate it relative to the beam's location. Add another pin to the add vector and split the struct. Get the capsule component scaled half height. Then add a flow to this and connect it to Z. Set the value to 25. Connect the final result to the location output. Now get the actor location and add a find look at rotation node. The target will be the location value we just calculated. Split the rotator and make a rotator. Leave roll and pitch as zero and connect only the yaw. Now connect this to the rotation output. I will now comment the function. Add the function. Set the beam actor and spline inputs from the cast. Set the move to factor to 20. Connect the location and rotation to the move to. Set force shortest rotation path to true so that the player's rotation direction is based on their current direction. Make sure you set can moves default value to true. As you can see the player now snaps to the beam when they are close enough to it. Now make a new custom event called move on beam. Go to the movement input script. Add a branch if can move is true. The condition will be is on beam. If false, then continue with movement input. If true, then call the move on beam event. For the event, first add a sphere trace by channel. For the start and end, get the world location of the mesh. Set the radius to 20. I will set the draw debug type to for duration so the traces are visible during testing. Next break the hit result of the trace. Check if the hit actor is valid. This is to ensure that something was hit. Next we will check if the hit actor has a tag called beam.
If true, then cast to the beam actor from the hit actor. Now create a function for finding the move to location and rotation while on a beam. It will have the same inputs as the function we created before but with an extra float input. This will be a distance to compare against. There will be 5 outputs. The first is a boolean that decides if the player can move on the beam. The second is a target location that will be used to check if the player is at the ends of the beam. The third and fourth are the move to location and rotation. The fifth is a rotation for the mesh so that the player can be aligned on slope beams. Copy this part from the previous function we made and paste it in the new one. This needs to be modified which I will do later in the video. Next get the actor location and get the distance node. V2 will be the result of the vector addition. Check if the distance is greater than a value. I will rename this input as it should be for distance, not angle. Add this input as the value to check if greater than. Connect the result to the can move on beam output. Edit the addition part of the section by removing the extra pin and adding it as an extra node instead. Connect the first added vector to the first vector output. Connect the second one to the second vector output. Now copy and paste this part from the previous function as well. Connect the return value to the first rotator output. Now add a make rotator node. Multiply the pitch from the find look at rotation by minus 1 and connect it to yaw of the make rotator. Connect this to the mesh rotation output. This is done since the mesh rotation does not match the actors in terms of axis. For the find look at rotation target, connect it to the location output. In the move on beam function, set the yaw value of this make rotator to minus 90. Add a branch node after the cast. Add in the function as well and set it to a pure function. Set the move to factor input to 20 and compare distance to it. The beam actor and spline component inputs are the same as for the previous function. The condition of the branch will be the can move on beam output of the function. 
make a new boolean variable called moving on beam. Set its value to true if the branch is true. Then add a sequence. Add a move component to for the capsule component. The location and rotation will be the corresponding outputs from the function. Set force shortest rotation path to true. I will set the over time to 0.1 to make the move to faster. On completed, set walking on beam to false. The second path of the sequence will also be a move component too. For this one set the component to the mesh. The location will be the relative location of the mesh as we only want to change the rotation. Set the rotation to the mesh rotation output of the function. Now we will check if the player is walking off the beam. Add a branch node after setting moving on beam to false. Get the location of spline point from the spline. Add a distance node from it. Duplicate the get location at spline point. Get the number of spline points from the spline and subtract one from it. Set this as the point index for the second get location. Add a distance node to this one as well. The second vector for both of them will be the target location output of the function. Get float less than float from both of the distances. Add an OR operator of the two boolean outputs and set this as the branches condition. I will convert this into a function. Set it to a pure function. I will fix up the function. Add a float input to it called min distance. This will be the second float in the less than. I will use a value of 20 for this. This means that if the distance between the target location to move to and the start or end point of the spline is less than 20, then it will exit the spline as it means we are trying to walk off it. If the branch is true then it means we should exit the beam. Set the max walk speed. I will use this default walk speed variable from a previous video. It is just the default max walk speed of the character. Then set the is on beam variable to false. Now I will correct the target location calculation in the beam moving function. Delete the control rotation as we need to get the location based on input and camera direction. 
Get the IA move and split the vector 2D. Make a vector of it with the X and Y components. Get the yaw pitch from the vector and make a rotator of just yaw. Then get a delta rotator. Set the make rotator as B and A will be the control rotation. The delta is basically the rotation equivalent for normalizing. Split the struct pin and add 90 to yaw. Drag out of the result and add a select float. For B, get the actor forward vector. Get the rotation from X vector of it and split the pin. Connect yaw into B. The selects condition will check if there is any input. Get the IA move again and add X and Y. Check if this is not equal to zero. If it is then there is no input in any direction. I will convert this into a function as it will be used again later in the parkour series. Add a return node to the function. Make a rotator with the select node output connected to yaw. Make this rotator an output. Open the beam move to function. Change the value in this add node to 12. Now open the character's animation blueprint. Get moving on beam from the character BP and promote it to a variable. For the animation graph I will do a simple setup using blend by bool but it is better to do it using states and or transitions. The player now walks along the beam and the crouch walk animation plays when they are moving. The player also follows the spline based on the input. The system is also working with curved splines. There is an error with getting off the beam. Open the check can walk on beam function. Change the coordinate space of the get location at spline point nodes to world.
Now the player is exiting the beam if they walk off it. The player is also aligning to slopes in the spline. You can disable the setting if you want, especially if you have an X setup as the player will automatically adjust to be standing on slopes. Before the move component to for the mesh, add a branch node. Make a new variable that can toggle the setting on or off. The player now stands on slopes with foot IK rather than rotating the mesh to align. Finally, I will make an exiting beam system so the player can exit without having to walk off the ends. I will be using left control for this but I have already used it for mantling so I will quickly add a branch that only mantles if you are not on a beam. Add a branch that checks if on beam. Next create a function for an exiting beam trace. Add a local variable called random direction and set it to either minus 1 or 1 at random. This is so the player does not jump off in the same direction each time and it can be either. Add a for loop with break. For the last index make a literal int and set it to 5. This means there will be 6 traces around the player in a circle as arrays start from 0. Add a sphere trace by channel. Add 1 to the literal int and divide this value from 360. 360 is used since a circle has 360 degrees. Multiply the result by the loop index and the random direction variable. Each trace will be done in an increment of 60 degrees. Now add a get actor forward vector and rotate vector. Make a rotator for it and plug in the flow to yaw. Add a multiply node. Make a new input for trace length and set it as the value to multiply by. Now add a vector. The vector to add will be the mesh's world location. This will be the start point and the end will be this with 40 subtracted in the z-axis. Set the radius to 5. I will also make the draw debug type an input so I can see the traces while testing.
drag out of the traces return value and add a branch. Go to the trace calculation and make sure the 360 divided by is floats and not integers. If the branch is false, it means there is not a beam in that direction so we can jump there. Add a sequence node. Connect the first one to break from the for loop. Then set the beam tracer to have no collision. Go to this part of the moving on beam code and make a custom event called on beam exit. Connect it to setting the max walk speed. Call this custom event in the function. Then add launch character. Break the hit result from the sphere trace. Get the actor location and find look at rotation with the target being the trace start. This is used to make the player rotate to the direction they are jumping off in. Get the forward vector of the rotator. Multiply this by 800 and add 1200 in the Z axis. You can adjust these values if the jumping does not look natural. Set this as the launch velocity and set both overrides to true. Then add a return node. Break the find look at rotation and make a rotator with only yaw connected. Set this as an output by dragging onto the return node. Now go back to the event graph. Get event on landed. Add a sequence node and set the beam tracer collision back to enabled. Add the function if the branch is true. I will set trace length to 30. You can make it higher if you want the player to jump further away. Then add a move component too. The component will be the capsule component and the location will be the relative location of it. The rotation will be the rotation output of the exit beam trace function. As you can see the player now jumps off the beam when you press left control. That is all for this video. You can purchase this project using the link in the description if you want. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.